What's going on guys? This is Jake from Fish Tech and I am pretty excited about this app that we are going to be talking about. It is the Mac OS Control Center on the Mac. It's like, it's just like on your iPhone, but on your Mac, except it is so much better. It's like way better than on your phone. I'll, let me say this, on the surface, it looks, um, not as useful as you might imagine. Obviously, it looks incredible. And you kind of look at like this stuff and you're and you might be thinking, oh, why do I need to activate a drop down? Nope. No, we don't want that. Why, you know, why do I need to activate this just to like change my brightness and and the volume of my computer? Don't I have the touch bar for that stuff? you know, toggling Wi-Fi and all this other stuff. But this program actually goes a lot deeper than just this surface level, uh, what you see. And we will be going into it and describing exactly what it is capable of. And it's really cool. And I'll leave this link in the description that brings you to this, um, basically lists everything that this app is possible, uh, capable of doing and it's just so cool it works off of the the relatively new floating web view feature that better touch tool has and honestly i'm really excited to see where not just this goes but any other floating web view tools um, progress with better touch tool because it's just it's very cool so the way that this works is it works off of uh, all apple scripts so um, you know, when, whenever you press one of these buttons, it's going to trigger an Apple script for the most part that is going to launch whatever you want or, um, you know, do whatever task it is that you want. So there are some very neat media controls that didn't work for me yet. But I talked to the developer and they say um, that a bunch of new stuff is coming out soon. And maybe I didn't set something up right, that is always possible. But for right now, um, these trackpad gestures and normal mouse gestures didn't, uh, didn't work for me. So now in order to activate this, it's technically a preset, but you don't make it the master preset. It's almost like a, an add-on to your current preset. Um, so you might notice I'm using a slightly different preset than I normally do. That's because we're getting ready for a review on it. So if you're excited for that, drop a like on the like button. But the way that this works is make sure that you have your master preset as whatever preset you want and then you're just gonna make sure that this is active. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this cool WebView Mac OS Control Center. So the way that you can activate it is you can either come up to your menu bar and double click and it'll pop down from the top and to make it go back up, you just click the little arrow down there or you can hit FN1 and that will also make it pop up. You can also, no, we don't want to do dictation. Sometimes that pops up. You can also slide your fingers from the top of your trackpad down to the bottom of it, and that's gonna activate it as well. I don't like that one as much because it can, it doesn't activate it all the time. It can be a little tricky to get exactly how you want it. So I prefer to do the FN one and it just pops up in this nice location so you can obviously adjust the brightness your volume you can do the typical the wi-fi bluetooth yada 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 if you right click some of this stuff it'll bring you to the airdrop option and then you can bring it back same thing with the wi-fi and the bluetooth that'll bring up those options if you scroll over this battery you'll get the cycle count and the battery health which is very nice feature very nice touch so you just scroll right over the battery and then that pops up if you scroll over here you'll notice that you'll get battery and boost now if you click battery you will have to install a couple programs for all of these features to work but almost every single one is free except for one 
but if you hit the battery, then the Turbo Boost Switcher app and the G Switch app are going to activate. So I'm gonna hit battery for you. And what happened is my screen brightness went to 25%. Bluetooth was turned off. Some people might not want the Bluetooth to be turned off. You can edit the Apple script if you don't want that to happen. And then you can just make sure that that's not part of the Apple script. Aside from that, you'll notice that two apps up here popped up. You get the Turbo Boost Switcher, which what this does is it basically does not allow your computer to turbo boost. So it's going to be a lot more efficient, not attempting to run at a higher clock speed. It's just going to be limited. You also have the G Switch, which is going to make sure that you are on the integrated GPU and not the discrete GPU. Normally you're on dynamic switching so that Apple can determine which is the best to get. But if you stick on the integrated GPU only, you're gonna have so much better battery life as well as this uh, not allowing the turbo boost to happen. So you can install both those apps and then make sure you bring them into the applications folder and then it'll just work perfectly. So if you want to now, you wanna boost, okay? So you click boost, now you're your screen brightness is back to 50%, Bluetooth comes back on, and you close out of both of those apps that you just opened. Like, to me, that is pretty insane that you can do that all with the click of one button. It just makes, it. it's like so much more efficient than going through, turning on each app. All you have to do is click battery. Boom, both of them popped up. Now I'm done, I can click boost and we're back to normal. So that is just an amazing feature. And there is more like that. There are more, which is what makes this so cool. So here's the next uh, cool Apple script feature. So if you click this, it is going to enable an app called Hazover app and native brightness control app. The Hazover app is the one app on this list that is not free, but I'm on the free trial right now. And honestly, I do like it a lot. Basically what this Hazover app does is if you open up a window and then let's say you open up like the calculator on top of it, it actually dims the windows behind it. So the active window is highlighted. And I looked at it and I was like, ah, honestly, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna like it that much. And then I started using it I was like, Oh wow, this is actually super handy. Like uh, I, I do really like this. So I'm pretty sure it was three dollars in the App Store. Yeah, it's three dollars in the App Store. Honestly, not a terrible price. I'm gonna keep using it, and then I think I'll let the free trial run out and see um, if I hate my life without it, and then I'll make a decision on it. And then the other app that pops up is native display brightness. And basically what this does is if you are hooked up to an external monitor, then you'll be able to control the brightness just like you would on your Mac OS natively. So handy little app, it opens and closes now when you take part in uh, using this, this little Mac OS control center. So you can just turn that off and you can see that the app just closes right away. So moving on to the next one, we have this little eyeball. This is the anti-sleep app. So you can use, you click this and you'll see this pop-up is the anti-sleep app. It'll prevent your computer from going to sleep. It does look like you can upgrade it to a pro version, but you, it doesn't look like you need to do that to prevent the, the computer from sleeping. It seems that there are uh, some other options. You can also link this up to Amphetamine, which is a totally free app that will do the same thing. So when you're done, you decided you don't need that sleep effect anymore, just click it one more time and it'll automatically close the app, which is really nice. You can also use this to toggle max fan controls. So I clicked the button and you should probably hear right about now that uh, my fans are on full blast because that's what my max fan control settings are on. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off just you don't have to deal with it. But that's what it does is pretty awesome to just not have to go launch this through um, Spotlight or you know whatever else method you got. You just hit a quick hotkey, click the button, boom, 
it's going, it's running. And then it's the same thing to just shut it down. Now, Mac OS Control Center allows you to have uh, four customizable Apple scripts and you can put whatever icons you want in there. Uh, I haven't designed anything for me yet, but I'm definitely gonna look into it, see if I can come up with something nifty and, uh, and I'll, 100% share that with you guys uh, once we get that going. And you might have noticed these things down here. These are actually um, actions that you can do. So they're related to folders and uh, or sharing. So you can you can look at the uh, specifically what each one does on the website. This lists everything that you can do and there's just so much that you can do. It's pretty crazy. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about is this little Apple logo. It's a little deceiving, but if you click it, it's actually gonna show you four options um, and these are to sleep, log out, restart your computer, and shut it down. So nice to have that there. And if you right click the Apple logo, you're gonna get a settings op, uh, menu options. So there are actually a lot of settings in here and it gives uh, some insight into what's going to be coming next. So you can see desktop widget is a work in progress, which is really nice. Uh, let's you open the preset folder, open the scripts folder, and there's just a, a whole host of other features that you can toggle on or off. You can set the user toggles um, and the icons that you want for these four, and you can also rearrange uh, how everything looks. You can mess with the functions, you can customize your four functions that you get, and of course, uh, the support page. So I will say the one um, the one part that doesn't work great for me is the media controls. Now, you are supposed to install a program called the Bearded Spice. And basically what this allows you to do is set up some keyboard shortcuts to control different audio sources that are playing. So if you have, let's say Spotify open and YouTube open, you can switch between each uh, each like device and determine what you wanna do with it. So it's possible that I just didn't set this up correctly within the macOS control center, but it does work perfectly fine on its own. So in order to play and pause, you just hit command P and then next is command right arrow, previous command left arrow, arrow and then um, player switching shortcuts. So this would be switching from Spotify to the YouTube that's playing. You can hit uh, control N to get the next one or control B to get the previous one. Um, and those are just the presets that I set for myself. So I'll show you it in action. Regardless of whether this uh, Mac OS Control Center is working for the media controls, these do work, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're just supposed to be wired through here so you can be able to um, click these buttons, but they didn't really work great for me. I'd, I'd much rather stick to this. So here's me hitting Control N to bring up the other actively available play setup and then you can just hit control n to alternate to the next one so it'll just bring it to the front and then and whichever one you have selected right here that's going to affect with the control so if i hit command p and then i go check this out you'll see it's playing if i go back to google hit command p again you can see that it is paused. So these controls will work for you know whatever app you're in it'll target ever is selected here. So didn't work perfectly in Mac OS Control Center for me, but it does work perfectly with this normal app. So it still brought me to the same resolution. So that's pretty much all the features that I really wanted to talk about. Definitely go look at the page to read everything that this is capable of because I still didn't even cover everything and this was even longer than I intended it to be. A little warning, this isn't perfect. It is really awesome, but it's not perfect. There are occasional times where this will crash better touch tool or accidentally restart it. It's not perfect, but it's just pretty freaking awesome in my opinion. Hope you guys check it out and enjoyed this video. That's all I got. Peace.